This is a weird haul for me, y'all. I, I mean, I don't find the best things at the bins because I am not as aggressive as everybody else. I'm working on it. I definitely was working on it. Howdy y'all, my name is Gretchen and I am the Restless Thrifter and today I'm going to be doing a collaboration video with Jen the Reseller. If you aren't familiar with her, um, please go and watch her. She's great. I'm going to link her channel below, possibly the very video that is associated with this collaboration, but if not, just her channel. And um, she and I challenged each other, sort of. Like neither one of us is really all that competitive with other people. We like to compete with ourselves, like our own sales goals and everything. We challenged each other to a Ben's thrift haul, but we were like, uh, it doesn't need to be that much of a challenge as far as like naming a winner. So it's up to you. It's up to you. We both win in our eyes because we got some good inventory and we're having fun doing this and sharing videos with each other's viewers. And you tell us in the comments um, who you think had the best overall haul or just, you know, what your favorite item was, because honestly, it's not a competition. We are fine just both sharing the glory. Jen is a part-time reseller, as am I, and I think she sells on all the same platforms as I do, eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. She's a stay-at-home mom, and she does this to supplement her family's income. I think we're, we do about the same business when it comes to the numbers. Um, I'm trying to go to full time. We'll see how that goes. You can go watch my um, December wrap up video where I talk about my 2023 goals. They are lofty. <laughs> they are lofty. So yesterday, which was January 9th, I went to the Goodwill outlet. I think it says Goodwill outlet world in Denver and there's three in the Denver area, but this one is in Denver, Denver, like Denver proper. And it is the largest to my knowledge and I love it. I love hate it actually. It gives me some anxiety because I have to get there early to get a parking space, the tiniest parking a lot ever. Gotta get there early to get a parking space and a cart. And then there's the anxiety of digging into the bins uh, and touching gross things and the anxiety of other people being in your face and reaching in front of you. People's favorite thing to do is to shop for whatever's in front of the person next to them. <laughs> Cause it's like the grass is always greener, right? Looking right here is not good enough. I need to also grab everything from in front of this person and sometimes out of their hands. Drives me insane, but I'm trying to chill out. I'm trying to chill out and I just um, say something if they're taking something out of my hands or touching me or hitting me. And if they're not, I don't say anything because you know, they're just trying to get to the thing. Like I, a lady pulled a pair of silver jeans right out from in front of me. It would have been the next thing I looked at. I'm like, God dang it. But you know, it's not like it was mine. None of this belongs to me until I put it in my hands, right? Or until I pay for it. So anyhow, I went yesterday. I picked up, I think it's 59 things. A few things were like personal items. Um, and after all is said and done, my average cost of goods per item was a dollar five. One dollar and five cents. I mean, I could round that up to a dollar six, I guess, because it was like 1.0555 six, seven, something. That's pretty great. That is really great. And when I say per item, some items are like five things together. So like I bought five little people animals. I'm counting those as one because I plan to sell them together. This is probably going to take a while. Probably will be my biggest, longest haul video ever because what we did say is there was a limit to two Ikea bags, a two Ikea bag limit. And um, that's exactly what I got. I'll try to go through this pretty quickly. I do have comps and sell-through rates in some cases, and I will share those when I do. Okay, so this first item on top is something that I think someone else probably threw back. Um, it is a corduroy and suede Colorado hat, and it is vintage. It actually says 1981 on there. 
It's uh, made in the USA, one size fits all. I don't know if Prairie Mountain is an actual brand, but the, it says Prairie Mountain on it and it's the snapback trucker style. It looks really clean, so I don't mind putting it on my head. Colorado hat, I mean, I don't think I pull it off. <laughs> I'm not sure who would, but <laughs> how much do I expect to get for this? I really don't know because I couldn't find any solds or anything. I'm not sure where to start it. I'm going to do some more research on this type of vintage snapback hat. All right, another hat. None of this has been washed or wiped off or cleaned in any way. This has a lot of dog fur on it. Does not seem to be my dog fur, so I'm not gonna put it on my head. Although I do love this hat. This is um, a no brand as far as I can tell. And it does have an RN, so I'll look that up. It is 37% wool and then it's got a whole bunch of other stuff in it. Um, and then it's got this cute concho hat band and it's a beautiful rust orange color and y'all, yo, you know, it's my coloring. I am digging this. I don't believe I found any comps because hell, it has no brand. Um, but you know, once I clean it up and get all the dog hair off of it and like Lysol it and everything, I'm gonna try it on because I might decide to keep it. It's super cute, right? So far, I'm off to a bang with this. <laughs> All right, another hat. This one I did get um, comps on. This is also very, very lint, linty and um, dog furry or cat furry. But look at that really cute hat band. It's conchos, and I think that's like a faux bone. It's certainly plastic, but um, I think it's made to look like a carved bone. And it is that fun floppy style. It is 100% wool. The brand is called Scala, the Scala collection, which is a good brand for hats. And it does have the 100% pure wool mark on the inside. Um, I found that the average sales price for hats like this pre-owned was $16.20 with a 19% sell-through rate. So I like that sell-through rate. I'm gonna put something up right here that talks about sell-through rate and why it caps out at 100% and does not go over. This next one is, don't judge me, uh, America, stick to your guns. It's your right. So, you know, some hardcore gun person might want this. Um, the brand doesn't seem to be anything notable, really but it was in great shape and didn't look like it had ever been worn. Um, I did find comps and $11.16 was the average sales price, 13% sell through rate. So let's talk about the ASP. Um, I expect to get more on some things and less on some things than what that ASP is. I mean, it's exactly that, it's an average. And it, I didn't weed out um, auctions or anything. So sometimes those can pull things down. Um, I just took it all into consideration. All right, I think this is my last hat. And this is one I'm just gonna keep for myself because it's uh, definitely my style of hat. And I love Sedona and I loved the colors of this. And this brand was Legacy. Did I look this one up? I did and I didn't really find any comps so um, I think it's because I just didn't look too hard because I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it for myself. Okay, moving on to different things other than hats. Okay, this is something else that I bought for myself. And um, if you've seen my videos before, uh, thank you for returning. If you are new, welcome. Um, I don't know if I told you anything about myself. I have two dogs. That's one of them. So I live in Denver, Colorado, and I think in one of my recent videos, I talked about my rheumatoid arthritis. I've got some other autoimmune issues. It's a whole thing. Um, I bought these for myself, Handy's Therapeutic Craft Gloves, because I just thought, hmm, maybe this will feel good on my hands, because um, my hands were really hurting 
while I was picking through the bins. And this is what they look like. They have not been used, you can tell. But they um, are a little snug on me and maybe they're supposed to be, but I will have to say it did not feel better on my hands. And I found out that they had a great sell through rate, so why would I keep something for myself if I can make some money off of it? These um, had comps of $13.85 was the ASP, but with a 38% sell through rate. So next item, um, okay, so I am trying to pick up mo more home goods, hard goods this year and learning about things. And I don't know why I'm attracted to the craft kits, but I am. And when you find one that's brand new and packaged and is at the bins and costs you only a dollar, you know, why not give it a try? This is a winter snowman felt wall hanging kit. And uh, I did find comps. I will say that it seems that some craft kits have a higher sell through rate and this is not the brand that necessarily does. This had an ASP of 697. I don't know why I don't have a sell through rate written down, but I don't. So I don't know. It may not sell till next Christmas either. All right, speaking of hard goods, this is a bunt pan. And yes, it's a bunt pan. So I know you can get dinged on eBay for calling something a bunt pan because it's trademarked, but this is a bunt pan. So I can use that term, right? I saw others had. Um, it's the brand is Northland Aluminum Products and it is scratched up inside. Average sales price was only $13.12, but keep in mind I paid a dollar for this. It did have a 10% sell through rate and it's quite possible I'll keep this for myself. All right, if we were gonna name a winner and a loser right now, the loser would be me because I don't have many things that I'm selling. I have a lot of things I wanna keep. <laughs> Something else I bought for myself, seam seal. It is tent repair kit and it was unopened and we go camping and you never know when you might need one of these. All right, here's something I'm definitely selling. It's in the home goods department. This is, the brand is Zafra and these are hand painted ceramic furniture knobs. I don't know how many were supposed to be in here, but I have eight. I feel like there might've been 10 or 12 just based on the comps that I found. And they're all different. You know, it gives you that eclectic look. So there was one in here I thought was particularly cool. Oh yeah, this uh, compass one. Oh yeah, so I found some that sold brand new for 1995 and 1996. Um, but one was a set of 12 and one was a set of 10. This is a set of eight. So eight or 10, I think eight. All right, another thing, I think all the things I'm planning on keeping <laughs> ended up on the top. This is actually gonna go to a friend of mine um, who just moved into a new place. Me, when my song comes on, I just thought it was a really cute dish towel. And I did look up comps just to see what it was selling for. And um, ASB was $10.54 um, with a sell through rate of 27%. So that's pretty good. Um, I don't know if that was like for sets of them or anything, but it's just a really cute dish towel and I plan on sending that to her this week. This turquoise and purple mug has no marking that I can find anything about. It looks like it says D-R-I-P-K-A. I don't know. I have searched that. I have Google imaged this bottom and this mug, and I just can't find anything. But it is very well made. And I know these ceramic stoneware, I don't really know the difference. Um, mugs can be popular. I thought it was pretty colors. It's turquoise or teal and purple. To me, it reminded me of like, sea life or something, you know, I don't, but since I didn't have a brand or anything, I didn't know um, really how to comp it. So I think I'll start it off at uh, $25. All 
Uh, the other bag of stuff that I have is all clothes mostly and stuffed animals. This one is just really a mixed bag. This is the biggest stuffed animal I picked up. Cute vintage bunny rabbit. I love the floral ears and the jumpsuit. We used to wear these in the 80s. Oh, God. And this is a brand I have found a couple of times now. This is Plush Creations 1991. It's got the year on there, which is always helpful. And just a super cute bunny in really great shape. You know, my cost of goods may just have gone down because I don't see this bunny listed in my list of things. Yeah, I saw, saw similar that sold for 20 to $30. So I re <laughs> really like this guy. He'll be easy to ship though. He folds up well. Okay, this guy's super cute, right? Isn't he cute? <laughs> He's scary. <laughs> He's feisty. These, this is a feisty pet. Feisty pets. There you go. And um, the William Mark Corporation, Feisty Pets, 2015. This bear. There was another one I found, but all his felt on his nose was rubbed off, so I just left him behind. All right, so the Feisty Pet Bear I saw had an average sale price of $12.66 with a 21% sell-through rate. All right, another plush. This is a little seven inch Grinch with tag. It's a little bent up, so I don't know if I can call him new with tag. And the brand's Aurora with Dr. Seuss. Um, ASP of $11.81 with a 36% sell through rate. Of course, that was over the last 90 days, which would have included Christmas and before. All right, getting into home goods. This, hi Janice, my friend Janice resells a lot of brass vintage picture frames. Like a lot. She picks them up every time she sees them really, as long as they're in good condition. And this one, the brand is Burns and um, I think it holds a five by seven, but the mat is like a four by six. So I don't know what I can get with this single frame, but I was excited to give it a try to try selling vintage brass frames. I might wait until I have a few more to lot them up together. Janice, leave a comment below um, and tell me what do you normally get for picture frames? Like what would you say for a single frame? Potentially a mistake in picking this up. Um, I didn't know what they were. Do you know what they are? They are slingshots, but they do not have their slings on them which I guess is basically a rubber band, so people could make them if they want. I thought they were some cute little wall de decorations, <laughs> little carved faces. You got this deer, I guess, and a buffalo. Yeah, a bison. So without the rubber bands, I'm not exactly sure how well these will do. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't have any um, an ASP or sell through rate for this, but I'm gonna try to find some comps and throw them up there. All right, next is a lot of six little people animals. Can you see that little people? It's not focusing, whatever. Um, they do have some damage, some scuffs. Got the pig, horse, Llama, he actually sells on his own, not too bad. A very dirty polar bear. A very dirty cow. I'm gonna clean these up. I would think they would be easy, right? Cow with baby. And then this one actually had some good comps all on his own, this ducky. This yellow duck. So, but I'm gonna sell them all together. I'm gonna clean them up. Um, I bet you it takes me a while to get them listed because Anything I have to clean by hand, can't just throw in the washer, you know, takes a back seat to everything else. All right, this, hopefully you can see it pretty well. It's a wall hanging. It's got the 
slot where you can put a rod through it. Handmade, I imagine. And the theme is obviously apples. Pretty cute. I don't have an ASP or comps or anything for this one either. And I haven't sold anything like this before, so I'll have to do some more research and see what I should list it for um, and see if it was a mistake. But this is, you know, a really neat deal and it is quilted. Right, y'all, this is a weird thing to pick up. It is also been used as a wall hanging. It, it's got its screws in it still. Need to take those out. But it is a burlap sack. And I think it's for coffee. Yeah, it is for coffee. Ah, try to show you the whole thing. The back. I found comps for this exact decoration on the back. Design, I guess is the word. Um, I don't know about the front, but it's for coffee. And these actually sell. Last wall hanging, and this is a vintage nursery rhyme, baby room wall hanging. It's also homemade. But anyway, it's Mother Go Goose nursery rhymes. And I thought it was really cute. It could work for a baby girl or boy, unisex. And I don't have any, I don't have any comps for this that I found other than I have sold one that's similar. Let me look that one up. That is relevant. I've sold a vintage Mother Goose nursery rhyme. I have bedspread blanket. Maybe this is a bedspread. Anyway, I would have used it as a wall hanging, but there's another one that I'd picked up that was similar, but brightly colored. And I sold it on eBay for 2508, um, which includes the cost of shipping in there. I was starting to get warm, so I took off, took off the scarf. This is an Aiden and Anais, I think is how you say it. Um, muslin, oops, upside down. Baby bundling blanket with hearts all over it. And I don't believe, I have not shown a lot of my face in this video because I keep covering it up. Um, I don't believe this one was ever really used. You can just tell by the way it feels um, or washed from that matter. I have several of these blankets. I've been picking them up and then just hanging on to them so I can sell them as a bundle. This might make five or four or five that I have now. And so it's time. And with Valentine's Day coming up, I think all the other ones aren't really holiday themed, but with Valentine's Day coming up, this heart one will be great. Okay, last little toy. This is a Mega Blocks John Deere tractor driver. I saw comps for similar ones, but not the same, like little white guys for um, $8.95 and $1.99. So I don't know what this version will go for. Um, he seems friendlier <laughs> than the comps that I found. Okay, so now we're on to shoes. I picked up uh, what I could. There are so many shoe resellers there. It's hard to, to get your hands on anything. These are Crocs um, in great shape. I had not seen this style before with this double strap. There is a name for this. I'll look it up. These are a size six women's, so a little small. They are very cute and in great shape other than I need to um, clean the bottoms. So, I mean, I'll clean them all the way around, but the bottoms are the only thing that's really particularly dirty. These are the Patra 2 sandals. Yeah, I did find some solds on Poshmark, one for 10 and one for $24. Um, interesting, the one that sold for $10 was new with tags. So I think I'll start at 20, but I didn't find any solds on eBay. You know how some days you look and there's nothing there and then you look again and something is there. All right, these are not Crocs, they're Ufos which um, here's the brand, Ufos. 
and these are recovery slides. Um, these are worn on the bottom. So I'll make sure to take some good pictures of that tread. Uh, the inside is pretty good, other than these are dirty and need to be washed. Fos recovery slides had a good ASP of $32.19 with a 49% sell-through rate. So I would say this is my first bolo. Be on the lookout for Ufos recovery slides. And another pair of Crocs. These are also slides. These are with Reviva, Reviva, Reviva. I am not familiar with Reviva Crocs collab, but they are real. Um, these are a size 10. Um, the ASP was $17.22 and the sell through rate is 30%. So that's actually pretty good too. You know, y'all Crocs do well. Perhaps something I shouldn't have picked up. Oh gosh, the sun is starting to get weird. Oh, y'all, what was I thinking? <sighs> These are Cotties and I'm holding them this way, not because they're shaped like fish, but because they are filthy on the bottom. I will not show you the backs because they're gross um, and need to be washed. And they are fish slippers. You put your feet in those. They are Cotty's fl fish flops. I'm gonna wash those up real good. And they had a <laughs> ASP of $13.66 with a 9% sell through rate. So I looked those up, but perhaps I was fooling myself. I must have seen something higher than that. A better decision making was picking up these Arco, Arcopedico, I think is how it said. Am I holding that upside down? Arcopedico. These are leather. They are, it says soft skin ergonomic footwear made in P Portugal, Europe, it specifies. I loved the beautiful floral that's on this tan orangey leather and they're in pretty good shape. They, um, the soles look good. They do have some wear here and I need to clean them. Um, the toes are gonna have the most damage, but once I clean them up, I think they're gonna look pretty good. And they're super cute. They had good comps and seltzer rate, um, floral leather ballet flats, ASP of $32 with a 38% sell through rate. And this is my first time finding this brand. I think I've heard of it before. Okay, second to last thing in this bag and then I'll have to go get the other one. Oh my gosh, these are dirty. Dirtier than I thought. These are Jambu memory foam shoes. And I have sold some like this before. It's been a while. Um, so I had to look them up and make sure they were at as good as I remembered. They're not like amazing, but they're pretty good. And they are uh, partially recycled rubber. So they've got this nice sole. I think people would wear these hiking um, or if you're doing a lot of walking somewhere because of the memory foam. But I did find these exact ones with solds and these are called the Bridget and the comps were uh, ASP of $30 with a 5% sell through rate. So I may sit on them for a while. They are an eight and a half if anyone's interested and I'll clean them up good for you. The last thing in this bag was something I didn't intend to pick up, but it was in my cart when I was unloading it, unloading all the stuff into my car. So I decided to go ahead and put them in the car because I paid for them. Um, they are a pair of Ray-Ban eyeglasses. And oddly enough, they are very close to my prescription. Um, <laughs> I put them on, I was like, whoa. So, you know, I'll clean them up a bit. I think they're kind of scratched. I imagine someone would want to replace the lenses. I don't know how, you know, badly people want to buy used Ray-Ban uh, frames, but frames can be expensive. I looked these up. Let it see. What did I see? Twenty nine point or $29.68 ASP 
with a 1% sulfur rate. So yeah, it's like, yeah, they can sell okay. Okay, got my other bag and I've closed the blinds. So hopefully the lighting's not too weird. This is another personal pickup. This is going to my niece who is decorating her baby room in giraffes. And look how cute and fat he is. Here's a little Boyd's bear. Um, you know, picking these up is something I told myself I'm not going to do. Her name is Carmela de Bervois. And comps were $5.65 with a 4% sulfur rate. And that's why I shouldn't be picking these up. This scarf is a dupe of uh, Alexander McQueen. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, it's got skulls and leopard print. And it's definitely not the real thing. There's no tag of any sort. Um, I, I knew it was a dupe when I picked it up. Um, it uh, has some holes in it. So this may be something that's going back to the thrift. If it was in better condition, I'd probably go ahead and list it and still sell it. This was something that um, did pretty well. This is a Donegal Tweed. The brand is Shandon Headwear. There you go. Made in Ireland, 100% pure new wool. And it's a little newsboy cap. I know that the ones that do this versus the ones that are like, you know, flat, have different names. I think this one is the newsboy. I don't know how to look it up. This, um, the ASP was $22.74 and the sulfur rate was 37%. So yeah, pretty happy with this one. This is a, a cool forest green too. I don't know if the color is really coming through, but it's a really cool color. Another hat. So this is the other style that I was talking about. It snaps down. And so one of them's a newsboy cap and one of them is called something else. I'll put the name up when I figure it out. This one didn't do quite as well. This is a penguin by Munzinger. And it's not vintage. It's a size medium large. And ASP was $14.32, but it also had a 35% sell-through rate, so that's good. This is a vintage gun. It's got a year on it. Let's see. 1986, and it's a little rattle sheep. I didn't find any comps. I didn't find any solds. I didn't find any listed. Um, I'm going to wash him and then... I'm hopeful on this one because he's unique. Another odd bit of thing that I picked up. Um, I don't know if I'll list this to sell. It's 100% silk, no brand. It's just, what is this? Is this a pocket square? You know, pocket square? Maybe, maybe I'll just use this to wrap up um, something pretty when it sells, you know? All right, now I do have a hard time passing up any vintage store branded clothing items. I don't know why. Montgomery Ward, no ironing needed. This is a men's medium with this groovy 70s collar. Um, it's got the little things in it to keep it nice and sharp and pointy. It's a cool floral print and it's a button up and there's no ironing needed per the brand. I love vintage clothing. And for some reason I am attracted to like the JCPenney, Sears, Montgomery Ward. Comps were $20.32 with a 15% sell through rate. All right, this is a, a better pickup. This is Hot Topic and it is plus size XXL. And it is a Skirtall, so it is a overall dress. And it's got this little ring here um, in the back. It's got this O-ring in the back. So really cute. I found the exact style and some comps. Um, comps were $17.70 was the ASP with a 29% sell-through rate. I do believe I can get more than that because the comps that I found we're not for plus size 
and I have good luck with plus size Hot Topic, Trip NYC, um, you know, Torrid, all that kind of style. Um, and I couldn't use a lot of keywords with this. Grunge, goth, punk, Y2K, you know, and they've got pockets, I mean. Another vintage piece that's a risk, but I really liked this dress. Um, I don't even know how to describe it other than a vintage shirt dress. It's a size 12, Missy. Remember when we used to call things Missy sizing? The brand is Together. I'm trying to remember where that was sold. Was it sold at like Spiegel? And this is a shirt dress with a plain black skirt and fun, different colored prints. It doesn't come with the belt that, I don't have the belt that it's supposed to come with, but I think this is gonna photograph really well and be a real, real fun one. I didn't find any true comps on it. All right, got some jeans. This is a pair of Free People. Um, did I find the style on this? I'm not sure, Free People. Size 26. I did find the style in this. This is um, like a wide leg crop let down hem. So I have picked up Free People jeans only once before. Had a terrible time selling them. They were just skinny jeans. I'm thinking these will do better and based on the comps, they should. These are the Chelsea Crop Kick Flare jeans. New with tags, they sold for $49.99 on eBay with a 20% sell-through rate, but I did find some others that sold on Poshmark. Um, it seems to be more of a Poshmark item. All right, another pair of jeans. This is American Eagle, and I do love American Eagle jeans, as do buyers. Buyers like to buy them. The next level stretch, you see in there? This type of font, the sans serif, is the newer one. These are the super high-rise jegging. I love that they put the style right there for you. And these are plus size. These are a size 20 regular. And they don't have any distressing other than the fading and whiskering there on the pockets, but no holes, uh, which, you know, I don't know. I like jeans without holes these days. I used to wear them, but now I'm like, no, it's cold outside. My knees don't need to be cold. And those are really soft. Very, very soft. I found two in that same style. The size 20 had an ASP of $15.61 with a 33% sell through rate. And I'll start those at 25 because you can get 20 to 25 for those. Here's a Madewell top. It's a size large. This cute shack, it's like a cream and gray, sort of a slouchy boxy fit. And this is the Central Shirt and Buffalo Check. It had an ASP of $20 with a 14% sell through rate. Another checked item <laughs> um, and another vintage item. And I, I just loved these because they reminded me of pants that I wore in high school. High waist, somebody's rolled them up, but they don't have to be rolled up. Kind of a tapered, a full but yet tapered leg. And they've got um, belt loops so you can belt it at the waist too. And just so cute, they are pleated. These are a vintage size 12 and they're vintage Morona. I don't know if it was always a Target brand, if these were Target. I don't remember there being a Target in the um, 80s, 90s time frame that I believe these are from. These are, you know, the paper tag made in the USA. They just look like something I would have worn in ninth grade. I think I had very similar, but I honestly don't remember Target. Maybe we just didn't have a Target in Fort Hood where I lived. Cause I would have been shopping there. I wouldn't have been caught dead in Walmart, but, or Kmart, we had Kmart. All right, this is a vintage Nike windbreaker. Here's the vintage tag. It's a size extra large, 1820. Um, does that mean it's women's? 
might. I was thinking it was a men's, but it could be a women's. It's in great shape. It's green and black. Um, let me try it on. Yeah, this is this is a women's extra large because it's small on me. And it's also vintage, so that's to keep in mind. All right, so women's, interesting. Um, I did find comps for similar windbreakers for $30.95 was the ASP with a seltzer rate of 17%. However, I was looking up men's because I thought it was a men's. Now I'm realizing it's a women's, but I really love the style on it. Okay, guys, Harley Davidson. When I find it in the bins, I'm going to pick it up. This is Sport Motors, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. And I liked the Indian Chief with the waterfall and everything in the road. I just thought that was a really pretty graphic. Um, you know, this is worn. It's got a lot of wash wear. It's probably started off black and it's more of a charcoal gray now. But it, and it doesn't have a tag. So I don't know what size it is, but I do believe this is an extra large men's, maybe even an XXL, but I will list it as extra large and then just list measurements, but they've cut the tags out really soft. Didn't find this exact one with solds. It's got some uh, staining potentially on the back too. First for finding this brand, I was excited. Somebody had thrown it back um, because it has either dirt and or damage, but I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna spray Dawn all over it and uh, wash it to try to get those grease stains out. There may be some discoloration as well. Uh, you see that? So I'm gonna see what happens. I still think it'll sell. Oh, it's Aviator Nation, I guess I should mention. Um, this is a great brand to resell, and I have never found it. Size 12, so I'm assuming that's a boys, it's a youth 12, with how small it is, I would think so. But even the youth sizes sell well. It's just that some kid really lived in this hoodie. ASP for youth pre-owned Aviator Nation hoodies is $50 with a 67% sell through rate. That's why I think this will still sell. Not for that much. Here is an interesting one. This is a vintage Diane Von Furstenberg DVF Concepts, which if I had to guess, I would guess is probably a lower priced diffusion line of Diane Von Furstenberg. This is a size large. It is oversized for a large, um, and it's got this kind of marled knit. Do I know the fabric content? It is acrylic wool, no, acrylic cotton and polyester. So yeah, I would say it's probably a lower end line. I did find this exact one listed, um, but not really any solds. So what would you price this for? By the way, you know I love me a big sweater, but <laughs> I'll try to uh, sell it. They have this listed for $11.99 at the thrift store. Nobody's going to pay $12. No reseller and no regular person. Okay, this is actually, it's interesting. It's got an ARC tag, which is not Goodwill. It's a different thrift store. And... This is a vintage pleated, what do you call that print? Swirly, um, psychedelic. I don't know, I just liked it. There is no tag to speak of in here. It could be homemade, it looks homemade, except for it has these little loops in it, you know, for hanging it up. This waistband was a great elastic stretchiness to it, so I'm gonna say this is probably a large. All right, we're actually getting very close to the end. This is um, something I debated picking up. 
It is new with tags. I think it's the only new with tag item I found. It's Cara Santana and Apartment 9, which is Kohl's. It's got the Kohl's tag. It retailed for $68 at Kohl's, but nothing is ever full price for long. But it's got this asymmetrical hem and it is faux leather. So black faux leather asymmetrical hem. Um, it looked really cute on the, in the stock photo. And I did find solds $24.99 with, with a 5% sell-through rate. And you know, it's a little late in the season for leather. Maybe not. It's still pretty cold out. Here is something that um, I caution myself against every time I pick it up. Athleta leggings. And I only caution myself because I tend to spend too much on them, but in the bins, not so much. These are extra small and they do have these pockets. Um, it's an older style. It's got some a zip pocket too right here. And then it's got the mesh at the bottom. I don't think people are doing mesh as much. And they are a crop. So I certainly wouldn't have bought, bought these for $7.99 or even half off of that. No. These are the all-in crop and the ASP was $18.13 with an 8% sell-through rate. See that sell-through rate? That's why I'm going to be hanging on to them for a little bit. And that is not based on size. I didn't look up size on that. So it could take me even longer for an extra small. All right, I told you I like to pick up vintage store brands. And this is vintage JCPenney. Big Mac. I love it. 100% cotton flannel. It's not like your traditional flannel. It just feels like a, a maybe a soft twill. Anyway, red and green. Missing a button? No. Button up. Size large, but I would say this is a vintage large, so it's a little smaller than traditional ones and I did find comps for $29.04 for the ASP and 19% sell through rate. Here's the other pair of super high rise jeggings I found um, in a size, these were a size six regular, same exact style. No distressing or anything. These are not as soft as the other ones, but they are in great, great shape. And I wouldn't have paid $9.99. Like ASP and sell through rate were higher on the larger size ones, the size 20 on the size six. The ASP is $13.42 with a sell through rate of 13%. So larger sizes sell better in this particular style, in this particular time frame, this point in time of life. All right, this was an interesting pickup. It's Prana Vintage, I think. It's a size large and it's organic cotton and hemp, which is what made me want to pick it up. Really nice soft shirt and in this kind of a classic stripe. It's got the roll tab sleeves and this was doing well based on the um, fabric content. Uh, comps were $19.17 was the ASP and sell through rate was 18%, but I did see, you know, the comps I was seeing, I'm, I, I can get more than that. This guy I have sold before. He didn't have any tags in him, but I know he is Ikea because I have sold this puppet before. And he has a great sell through rate for some reason. I don't know why. 38% uh, sell through rate. He sells for about $10. All right, I think I have like maybe four items left, something like that. This is a brand I had not heard of before. It's an Australian brand called Witchery. Size 10, this is um, a very slim pant, ponty. And I thought, wow, these must be kids. But then they were so long. And then I realized, oh, they're Australian and that is not a US 10. Um, and the Australian sizing, it's a small, um, very stretchy. And this brand's been around a long time there. And 
does pretty well. So, but you know, I'm gonna pick up anything that has a witch in the name. I don't think there's anything witchy about witchery. Now some similar um, sold in Australia <laughs> um, for 15 to $20. Okay, yeah, I have four items left. This is my last plush. This is a sleeping elephant plush from Animal Adventure. I found comps for him. It's a little lovey. Uh, the only comp was $19.99 with a 50% sell through rate, and I think that was for a brand new one, but still bodes well. This, you know, I got from a Texas Roots, and uh, it'll be an easy thing to list. Shinerbach bandana, Shinerbach beer. I really like Shiner. If my dogs wore bandanas, I would give this to them. I found comps for $4.82 with the 31% sell-through rate. That is not a bad sell-through rate. Not gonna make much, but my gosh, how easy is it gonna be to photograph, list, and ship this thing? And that kind of thing really brought down my cost of goods too. Um, the average cost of goods. All right, this is one of the better pickups. Um, the last two things are two of the better pickups. This is a vintage kilt. No, not vintage. It may be vintage. I don't think so, but it may be. This is the way it goes. It's a kilt, including a little pin there. That pin's not worth much. It seemed like it's, you know, just made of a cheap metal. And this is the kind of kilt you get at a place called the Tartan Gift Shop in Edinburgh. Tartan Gift Shop, well, you get the idea. And it's got, I'll have to think, look up the name of this tartan because there's a name for this particular green and blue. There's the wool, it is 100% wool. And it's got the, you know, leather, actually feels like leather, leather buckles. So kilts I had heard do well. And so I was pretty excited to see this. Ack. I'm sure some folks passed it up thinking it was just a, another wool pleated skirt or a school uniform. I thought school uniform at first. I just spilled my coffee. I'm gonna use this to wipe it up, okay. This had an ASP of $22.50 with the 12% sell-through rate, but I, you know, I really think I can do better than that. Okay, and certainly my one of my more interesting pickups. I know some of you guys would have left this behind because it's disgusting because it's real fur, but it is a fur, rabbit fur, trapper hat. I am not putting this on my head but it's got the leather tie here. And let me see if I can, it, it's shedding so bad. <laughs> Here's the um, label, it's crown cap. Winnipeg, Canada. And I found a lot of solds for similar hats, very few that were all fur like this, for better or worse. <laughs> Some just had the fur trim. So much fur. And the ASP was $30.54 with a 32% sell through rate. So gross, huh? That's everything. Is that everything? Let me look. There's one other thing I got. It was a Axis and Allies board game. Got it for my husband. I may end up selling it because he's like, take a look and see what you can get for it because he doesn't really need it. He and his friends are just always picking up extra games to get extra pieces because you know, you lose the little. I don't know, ships, whatever. Um, it's some sort of war game and he loves it. And so I sent him a picture when I was at the bins. I said, do you want it? He said, absolutely. And it's never been fully used. Like some of the things were still in the original sealed baggies um, and the little cardboard cutout thingies hadn't been punched out. Um, there was only a couple of bags that were Ziploc bags. So it's like they started and then Somebody was like, eh, I don't wanna play this. And then they just never played it. Yeah, that's everything guys. So now let me figure out my cost of goods again. A dollar four, <laughs> rounding up to a dollar four. So <laughs> there you go, a penny less. 
per item because I had left one off. Thanks for watching. Go watch Jen's video. Give her a subscribe if you're not already. She's really great, down to earth, and I think if you like me that you will like her. So go check her out and I better get listing. Bye y'all. Last thing in this bag was something I did not intend to pick up. Ugh. What? I thought I had this on silent.